The Jack Benny Program, presented by Lucky Strike. At 59, American. Fine tobacco is what counts in a cigarette. And year in, year out. L-S-M-F-T. Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. Yes. L-S-M-F-T. Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. And in a cigarette, it's the tobacco that counts. Season after season, at market after market, independent tobacco experts, men who really know tobacco, can see the makers of Lucky Strike consistently select and buy that fine, that light, that naturally mild tobacco. Fine, light, naturally mild tobacco. Real Lucky Strike tobacco. And remember, this fine Lucky Strike tobacco means real deep down smoking enjoyment for you. So smoke that smoke of fine tobacco, Lucky Strike. So round, so firm, so fully packed. So free and easy on the draw. The Lucky Strike program starring Jack Benny with Barry Livingston, Phil Harris, Rochester, Dennis Day, and yours truly, Don Wilson. Ladies and gentlemen, last Thursday night, the Academy Awards were given out to a favored few. All the Hollywood celebrities gathered at the Shrine Auditorium to take their hats off to the winners. And so tonight, we bring you the man who had the hat check concession, Jack Benny! Thank you, thank you. Hello again, hello again, this is Jack Benny talking, and Don, you shouldn't have introduced me as the man who had the hat check concession at the Academy Awards. I was master of ceremonies, too. <laughs> <laughs> and Don, having the hat check concession certainly taught me a lot about those so-called big stars and pictures. What do you mean, Jack? You should see the tips they leave. <laughs> <laughs> Cary Grant, 15 cents. <laughs> Clark Gable, 10 cents. <laughs> Margaret O'Brien, a nickel. <laughs> I felt like throwing it right back in her face. <laughs> I couldn't believe it. I, I thought that, you know, I never saw such small tips. I thought that tambourine I had on the counter would help a little. And <laughs> what? To, and Don. Don. You know Rex Harrison? Yes. A shilling. <laughs> How do you like that? He thought because it looks like an American quarter, I wouldn't notice it. A shilling in this country? Well, what can you do with it? Let the owl drugstore worry about that. <laughs> I had breakfast there this morning. <laughs> anyway, Don, it was really a thrill seeing all those stars get those awards. Harold Russell, Ann Baxter, Frederick March, Olivia de Havilland... Ray Milan. Ray Milan? Did he win something again this year? No, he won an award last year. He just came back to get a new cork for it. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Don, the whole affair was really exciting. Well, tell me, Jack, who else was there? Well, there was Jane Wyman, Gregory Peck, Lionel Barrymore, Larry Parks, Dinah Shore, Hugo Carmichael. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and, uh... Hugo Carmichael? Jack, you mean Hoagie Carmichael. Don, if Hugo is good enough for Sam Goldwyn, it's good enough for me. <laughs> but, Jack... Don, I know what I'm doing. I never worked for Goldwyn. I'm not going to louse up my chances. <laughs> anyway, Don, it was such a wonderful affair, I was proud that they picked me as Master of Ceremonies. Well, Jack, I can understand you're being honored and thrilled. As a matter of fact, I, too, have something to be proud of. Really? What, Don? Well, this is television week, and they've asked me to appear on a television program. You on television? Don, Don, let me look at you, will you? Don, Don, wait a minute, turn around again, will you? No, no, it'll never work, Don, it'll never work. You, you, you can forget about television. Why? They'll never get a 60-inch beam on a 10-inch screen. <laughs> Believe me. Oh, Jack, I wish you wouldn't kid me about my size. I'm not so fat. You're not, eh? How about the time he got stuck in the Hollywood Bowl? <laughs> I remember... Oh, hello, Mary. Hello, Jack. Hello, Don. Hello, Mary. What are you talking about, fellas? Oh, the Academy Awards, television, and Don's stomach. You can take your choice of subject. You know. 
<laughs> well, I picked television. And, Don, I read a wonderful poem about it. A poem about television? Well, let's hear it. Okay. Television is here to stay, and it won't be hard to sell it. Now you can hear and see Jack's show, and soon you'll be able to smell it. <laughs> <laughs> smell it? Mary, don't talk about my show. Have you ever tuned into Fred Allen's program when the wind is from the east and your air conditioning is fighting a losing battle? <laughs> it's enough to make you lose faith in your air wick. <laughs> I'm just teasing. If you want to know something, I went to the Academy Thursday and I thought you were wonderful as Master of Ceremonies. Well, thanks, Dollface. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> but I still had a feeling that when they're giving out the award, you thought the committee was unfair. I thought the committee was unfair? What gave you that impression? You were the only one on the stage with a picket sign. <laughs> I wasn't picketing. The sign said, keep your eye on your own hat and coat. I'm on the stage now. <laughs> I wasn't a bit jealous. When Olivia de Havilland won her award, I walked right over to her, slapped her on the back, and said, congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> what are you laughing at, Barry? <laughs> then Olivia slapped Jack on the back. His toupee slipped down over his eyes, and Jack whispered, kiss me, honey, the lights went out. That <laughs> was a long speech, and you got it out. But that could happen... <laughs> I'm always worried about those long speeches. <laughs> but that could happen to anyone, really. Oh, but seriously, Jack, I thought you looked wonderful up there on the stage. And that good-looking tuxedo. Where'd you rent it? I didn't rent that tuxedo. I know you didn't buy it. Now, come on, where'd you get it? Mary, let's drop the subject. By the way, where were you sitting? Oh, about the 10th row. And, Jack, you'll never guess who was sitting right in front of me. Who? Mr. and Mrs. Ronald Coleman. Ronald Coleman was there? What was he wearing? A, a tuxedo. <laughs> well, you beat me to that joke. <laughs> he must have two of them. <laughs> Jack, you... Mary, we made a deal. Ronnie loaned me his tuxedo, and I returned his lawnmower. <laughs> now, what's the use of being neighbors? Oh, hello, Mr. Benny. Hello, Mary. Hello, oh, hello Dennis. Dennis. I'm sorry I'm late, Mr. Benny, but I had trouble with my new car. Dennis, I didn't know you had a car. Yes, yeah, my first one. When I drove down to the studio, I had to go around the block 86 times before I ran out of gas and the car stopped. <laughs> well, that's the silliest thing. Dennis, when you want to stop a car, all you have to do is step on the brakes. Oh, brakes. <laughs> now, don't start that again. And now that you're here, let's have your song. What's it going to be? Well, tomorrow is St. Patrick's Day, so I thought I'd like to sing Johnny God. Well, in short, and I'd be disappointed if you didn't. Thank Go ahead. You. It seems like only yesterday I left the port of Cork And on a ship from old Erin's Isle I landed in New York Without a friend to meet me there And a stranger on the shore I wore an honest Irish heart And fortune came galore So here I am going back To dear old Erin's Isle The friends, they'll meet me on the pier And they'll greet me with a smile There are faces there that I'll surely forget For I was so long away Oh, my mother will introduce them all And this to me will say Shake hands at your Uncle Mike, me boy Shake hands at your sister Kate Here is the girl you used to swing Down on the garden gate Shake hands with all the neighbors and kiss the Colleen's all. Oh, you're as welcome as the flowers are made to dear old Johnny Gall. They'll give a party when I get back and they'll come from near and far. They'll line the road for miles and miles with Irish Johnny cars. The spirits are flowing, we'll all be gay and we'll fill our hearts with joy. The piper will play an Irish wheel to greet the Yankee boy. Oh, what a party we'll have there. I'm telling you, never see the likes of it. Oh, tomorrow off to the church I'll go And wedded I will be To my pretty little Colleen Bond Sweet Nellie McGee Oh, Nellie was true and faithful To her dinny R the sea We'll join the harp and jamrock To the stars of liberty They'll come Brannigan, Flanagan, Milligan, Gilligan Duffy, McCuffy, Malacca, Mahone Rafferty, Lafferty, Donnelly, Connolly Tolly, O'Dolly, Muldowny, Malone Madigan, Cadigan, Lanahan, Flanahan Fagan, O'Hagan, O'Hulahan, Finn Shanahan, Lana, and Ogany, Fogany Kelly, O'Kelly, O'Benny, McGinn <laughs> 
Then I'll shake the hand of my uncle Mike, the hand of my sister Kate. Oh, I'll hug and squeeze as much as I please the girl in the garden gate. I'll invite all the neighbors to me wedding great and small. And I'll live content and pay no rent in dear old Donegal. That was... That was Donegal's song by Dennis Day. Very good, Dennis. Ah, oh, bless you, may your cows never go dry. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Mr. Benny, what? I sang that song for my mother. You what? I sang that song for my mother. Oh, well, it certainly is an appropriate song. I don't know anyone more Irish than your mother. Yeah, she wouldn't see the Jolson story till I told her it was the life of Pat O'Brien. <laughs> No. And she liked that new picture about Jerome Kern. Which one? Till the McClouds roll by. <laughs> Till the McClouds roll by. I bet his mother thinks NBC stands for Nolan Brannigan and Cassidy. Well, as long as it keeps her happy, I guess it's. Hiya, all... Livy. Hello, kid. Sorry I'm late, Buster. <laughs> well, Phil, look, it's about time you got here, you know Well, it wasn't my fault, Jackson, and I got a good excuse Yeah, yeah, I know You're going to tell me that you overslept, jumped out of bed, dressed as fast as you could, and rushed over here Hey, how did you know? You left a curler in your hair <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I got a curler in my hair, I overslept a little, I'm sorry, I'm late, and let's forget it Forget it? Unless you want to make something out of it no, I don't want to make anything out of it. Phil, you must have gotten up on the wrong side of the bed. Why? You've got Alice's shoes on. <laughs> yeah. How do you like that? I told her a thousand times, put them under the pillow, Blondie. Put them under the pillow. <laughs> Look, Phil, stop kidding. You wore Alice's shoes for a gag. You got your laugh. Now take them off. What are you talking about, Jackson? We need that kind of laugh. Sight stuff. Television is here. I know, I know. Ah, television. That's when I'll shine. When yeah. people can hear and see Harris. Shangri-La with a ham hock. <laughs> Isn't that awful? You know, folks, he really thinks he's handsome. Phil, what makes you so egotistical? I ain't egotistical. I'm much better looking than I think I am. <laughs> oh, I see. So you're not conceited, eh? Not me. In my family, Alice is the one who's conceited. Alice? Yeah, she thinks she's prettier than I am. <laughs> Why, the ingrate, after all the years, you let her support you. To her. <laughs> now, Phil, Phil, stardust eyes. <laughs> Narcissus boy. <laughs> hey, Schlemiel. What? <laughs> How about picking up your baton and making like you're leading a band? Then see if you can't. Who can that be? Come in. Yes, Mr. Benny. My name is Lewis. On last Thursday night, the Motion Picture Academy of Arts and Sciences gave out their annual awards. Yes, yes, that's right. At that affair, you were the master of ceremonies, weren't you? Yes, yes. In fact, I was on the stage during the entire proceeding. Oh, that's what I want to see you about. There's an Oscar missing. <laughs> now, wait a minute, Mr. Lewis. Does the Academy Award Committee think for one minute that a man in my position, a celebrity, a star for 15 years, a man who was respected by millions, would stoop so low as to steal an Oscar? Yes. <laughs> oh. He borrowed the tuxedo, too. Mary, please. <laughs> Mr. Lewis, I consider that an insult, and I wish that you'd get out of here now. Now, go on, get out. All right. But before I go, there's another matter I want to talk to you about. The Owl Drug Store. Get out of here! <laughs> That's gratitude for you. The Academy Committee calls me up, asks me to be master of ceremony, so I accept. What happens? Do I get any thanks? No. Do I get any salary? No. Just taxi fare and a lousy cheese sandwich. <laughs> no butter. Hey, Jackson, what about my band number? Just a minute, Phil. We've got to have a commercial first. Go ahead, Don. Let's have the commercial. Well, Jack, I'm glad you finally got around to it. What? I've got a surprise for you. Surprise? What is it? Well, you had trouble getting a quartet. The sponsor insisted on having one, so I took things in my own hands. 
Wait a minute, Don. You took things in your own little fat hands before. <laughs> you got the sportsman quartet. They cost me $500 a week, and that's what caused all the trouble. But, Jack, I got you another quartet, and it isn't going to cost you nearly as much. I don't care if Jack, I... give them a chance to talk. Maybe this new group will satisfy the sponsor and solve your whole problem. Well, all right, Don. What did you do? I mean, who have you got? Well, first of all, I only had to get three other fellas because you've already got Dennis, and you pay him anyway. Well, now you're really thinking, Don. Uh, where are the other three guys? Oh, they'll be here any minute. Okay, Don, I'll give them a chance. Who can tell? Maybe they'll... I'll get it. Hello? Hello, Mr. Benny, this is Rochester. Hello, Rochester, what do you want? I'm in a lot of trouble, boss. You shouldn't have asked me to bake a loaf of bread for dinner tonight. Why, what happened? Well, I took a small bowl and put in two cups of flour. Uh-huh. Then I put in a cake of yeast. Uh-huh. Then I added one cup of water and stirred it together. Well? It looked kind of dry, so I added more water. I see. Since I added more water, I threw in another cake of yeast. Well, isn't that a lot of yeast? That's what I thought, so I put in more water. More flour. More, more flour. More flour, I yeah. see. That, that made it too dry, so then I added more water. Rochester. That made it too soggy, so I put in some more yeast. More yeast? So to balance the, pro the, the, to balance the pro proportions, <laughs> I added more flour. Well, you balanced that one. You didn't let it drop, anyway. Huh? Yeah, I, I balanced the proportions with more flour. Flour? That made it too dry, so I poured in a quart of champagne. Champagne? I had to do something to break the monotony. <laughs> Rochester, that's ridiculous, mixing champagne with flour, water, and yeast. We got the only loaf of bread with a bun on it. <laughs> now, stop being silly. You made this whole thing up, and you know it. I thought so. Now, come on, Rochester. What'd you really call me for? You know that thing you brought home Thursday night that you woke me up to show it to me? Yes. Do I shine it with bronze polish or gold polish? Don't bother shining it. I have to give it back. <laughs> <laughs> Goodbye. Oh, say, boss. Now what? <laughs> you rascal, you. <laughs> Never mind. Goodbye. Goodbye. Except the wildest things I've ever heard in my life. Now, Don, what about the quartet you say you've got? Dennis is here. Where are the other three fellows? Well, Jack, they ought to be here any minute. In fact, here comes one now, Andy Russell. Andy Russell? <laughs> Andy. Andy, I can't believe this. I mean, do you want to be in my quartet? Why, sure, Jack, if it'll help you out. Gee, this is wonderful. Dennis, this is Andy. Where's Amos? <laughs> it's not the Andy and Amos and Andy. This is Russell. Not that Russell. <laughs> now, Andy, I'm thrilled with having you in my quartet. But, uh, uh, uh... That's Portuguese for how much money do you want? <laughs> yes, Portuguese. I mean, how much money would you want? Oh, $35 a week. $35 a week? Mm-hmm. I can't believe it. Well, would 30 be all right? <laughs> no, no, I'm perfectly willing to pay $35. You must spend at least half of that for tooth powder. I mean... <laughs> I mean... <laughs> must be wonderful to have such sparkling teeth. Well, it has its drawbacks. Huh? Well, when I talk to Don Amici, we blind each other. <laughs> I can understand that. Well, anyway, Andy, you Oh, hold it, Jack, hold it. Here comes another member of the quartet. Dick Haim! Dick Haim! <laughs> Dick, I haven't seen you since you were on my show three years ago. Oh, I know, Jack. It's nice to be with you again. Well, thanks, thanks. But tell me, Dick, why are you wearing those dark glasses? Well, Andy Russell might smile, and I'm not taking any chances. <laughs> oh, yes, yes, the teeth. Mary, Mary, you remember, uh, you remember Dick Hames, don't you? Hoo-hoo-hoo! <laughs> Mary! <laughs> well, Dick, I'm certainly thrilled having you as a member of the quartet, but, uh, 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 uh what? 
What's the matter, Dick? Can't you understand Portuguese? <laughs> Dick, what I'm trying to say is, well, if you're going to be in the quartet, how much money would you want? $35 a week. $35 a week? Well, now, Jack, if you're going to start haggling, just forget about it. No, 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 I'm not haggling. I mean, I, I think you're worth every cent of it, you know? But, of course, I can't make hold a... it... Hold it, Jack, hold it. Here comes another member of the quartet. Bing Crosby! Yeah! <laughs> Crosby. When the blue of the night meets the gold of the day, L S M F T. Bing Crosby, I can't get over it. You were expecting maybe a transcription. <laughs> I'm so surprised, I'm so surprised to see you. By the way, Bing, how's Dixie? Ask Senator Claghorn. <laughs> oh, Crosby, you shouldn't have wasted that one here, hoping to give you two bucks for it. <laughs> well, we needed that one. Now, Bing, believe me, I'd love to have you as one of my quartet, but, uh... $50, I understand Portuguese. <laughs> $50? Wait a minute, Bing, Andy Russell and Dick Hames are both willing to work for $35. Why do you want 50 I got four kids. <laughs> Oh, yes, yeah, I read where you're going to put him in the movie. Yeah, one of them is almost nine. It's, he's been loafing around the house long enough. I think. <laughs> well, look, fellas, I know that you're all good singers individually, and Dennis has been with me a long time, but do you think you can all give me what I want as a quartet? Um... <laughs> Wait a minute, fellas. That's your idea of a quartet. You're starting off on the wrong foot. <laughs> Don't worry, Jack. Don't worry. They're just warming up. Now, do you want to hear what they prepared? Of course, of course. Now, let's see. 35 and 35 is 70, and 50 is 120. <laughs> Not bad. All right, Don, let's see if they're worth... I mean, let's see what they've got to offer. Okay, fellas, let's have it. I'll be loving you always With a love that's true always Always When the things you plan Need a helping hand I will understand Always, always L-S-M-F-T Always Now let's wait a minute That's the smoke for me Oh, who the hell picked up his key then his day? <laughs> Not for Delta <laughs> Not Very good, and the commercial was all right. But for my purposes, I got to have something a little more lively. Do you think you can do it? Yes, sir. You bet. Why, well, well, sure. Yeah, I've been smoking Philco's for now under 20 years. <laughs> no, no. No, no, Bing. That's not what I mean. Oh, Jack, Bing's right. Every time you sit down to listen to your radio, your Autolite are lucky. Autolite. You had to get the plug in, huh? Now, come on, fellas. I want to hear a livelier number. How about it? Okay, take it, boys. He always sings. Raggy music to the cattle as he swings Back and forward in the saddle on a horse Pretty good horse there. While he's syncopated in it There's such a funny meter to the roar of his repeater How they run, oh how they run When they hear the fellow's gun Because the western folks all know He's a highfalutin, scootin', shootin' Son of a gun from Arizona Ragtime cowboy, hold that cowboy L-S-M-F-T, puff, puff <laughs> The singing, I can't complain about, but that time you didn't give me enough commercial and it was just a little bit too fast. I want something in between the two numbers that you sang. Oh, we have another song, Jack. It'll be just exactly what you like. You have? Hey, Dick, I'll sing bass this time. No, no, I want to sing bass. <laughs> I, think, I think I ought to sing bass and get down where the money is. <laughs> Look, fellas, 
Don't argue about it. Why don't you flip a coin for us? I think the old man is right here. I got a coin. What do you say, Dick? Heads or tails? Hey, Bing, where'd you get that funny-looking quarter? I had lunch at the old drugstore. <laughs> Fellas, you're holding up the show. Now, this cost me $120. If you don't attend a business, I'll call the whole thing off. Now, come on, let me have your other song. Yes, yes Mr. Mr. Benny. Benny. Take it, boys. Nothing could be finer than Goldsboro, Carolina in the morning. Don and Phil and Jack go out and pick that fine tobacco in the morning. Round and firm and fully You left out a word Easy on the draw It's jolly It is the best tobacco That you have ever uh, saw I hate Bad you, English, fella Happy Boone and Speedy Never look the least bit speedy want, In yeah. the morning They're picking and they're planting While they're singing and they're chanting In the morning LSMF, LSMF, MFFT. Oh, now that's a lucky strike to smoke for me. Nothing could be finer than Goldsboro, Carolina in the morning. No, fellas, that's not it. If you smoke a lucky, they will love you in Kentucky. All right. Wait a minute, that's not what I want. Look, fellas, that's Don. Now give me your lucky strike, one for Pat and one for Mike. No, wait a minute, that's not what I want. Fellas, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a Now, look, fellas, you tried, you meant well, and believe me, I appreciate it. But you boys just won't do. What? what? How do you like that? Now, you can leave your names, and maybe something will come up. <laughs> so long, fellas. Well, how do you like that? Oh, yeah. like There's no use people talking. People. I just got to get I my old quartet back. <laughs> that will be back in just a minute. First, here is Basil Rivesdale. As you listen to the chant of the tobacco auctioneer, remember... L-S-M-F-T. At 50, say I'm not a bit of a little 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 bit of a the kind of fine tobacco that you just can't beat for real smoking quality. I've smoked Luckies myself for 14 years. Remember, independent tobacco experts like Mr. Irvin can see the makers of Lucky Strike consistently select and buy that fine, that light, that naturally mild tobacco. Fine, light, naturally mild tobacco. No doubt about it. L-S-M-F-T. Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. Yes. L-S-M-F-T. Lucky Strike means fine tobacco, and fine tobacco means real, deep-down smoking enjoyment for you. So smoke that smoke of fine tobacco, Lucky Strike. So round, so firm, so fully packed, so free and easy on the draw. I want to thank Bing Crosby, Dick Hames, and Andy Russell for being with us tonight. It was very nice. Hey, uh, Jackson, just a minute. What is it, Bing? Weekly Variety, which is the outstanding newspaper of the entertainment world, has given you an award for your 15 years in radio. They feel that your weekly clam bakes on the air have been consistently right in the groove for, lo, these many years, and I agree with them. Congratulations. Well, thanks, Bing. Thanks very much. On behalf of my cast and writers who have been with me so long, I want to thank the Variety for this honor. And say, Bing, it was nice of you to make this presentation to me, but I wish you'd do me a favor. Sure, Jack, anything. What is it? After all, we got a classy program. The next time you come over, tuck your shirt in, will you? <laughs> I mean, those palm trees waving around upset me. <laughs> Good night, folks. National Broadcasting Company.